Hello history lovers and welcome back to the channel. Today for the spooky season, I thought that we would talk about the Guinness World Record holder for the most prolific female murderer ever with a claim of 600 and potentially more victims. That is of course Elizabeth Bathory, the Blood Countess. But did she deserve that record and nickname or has her name been smeared, much like our own Bloody Mary? Depending on how you interpret today's evidence, the Hungarian Countess Elizabeth Bathory was either a maniac serial killer or an innocent but powerful woman set up and betrayed by her family, like Juana of Castile. What I will say with today's episode, whatever the outcome, it is at times nearly impossible to separate fact from fiction with how her infamous story has evolved over the years. Bathory's alleged cruelty has gone on to inspire all sorts of media such as films, plays, TV shows and even video games. And of course, let's not forget Count Dracula. Before we start, let me know what your thoughts are about the Blood Countess and then we can see if your opinion has changed. And also, make sure you're subscribed. Elizabeth Bathory, the Blood Countess, was born on the 7th of August 1560 at the family estate in Nirbator to parents Baron George VI Bathory and Baroness Anna Bathory. Elizabeth was apparently very beautiful and, like with most noble women, had a great education. She loved to learn and she would write to other nobles to borrow their books with an interest in science and philosophy. Remember that, it will come into play again later. So let's explore the arguments. Bathory was accused of having killed between 30 to 650 young women. That escalated quickly. I mean, that really got out of hand fast. Between the ages of 10 and 14. Different sources will give you different figures. I have given you the extreme range here. Survivors and witnesses reported victims experiencing severe beatings, burning or mutilation of hands, freezing or even starving to death. But despite the countless eyewitness accounts, no one is said to have actually witnessed Elizabeth murdering anyone and a lot of those who testified against her were paid off, like one woman who was given a farm. Also, let's be real here, 600? 600. That seems like a ridiculously high number. And where did that figure actually come from? Well, apparently the Countess kept a ledger which recorded the names of every one of her victims. The ledger was allegedly, uh, the ledger was allegedly, kept by Jacob Silvassi, who in his testimony admitted to witnessing Elizabeth torturing people but he never mentioned a ledger, nor was the book presented as evidence. The servant girl who allegedly saw this ledger was also most likely illiterate. So how could she understand what was written in the book? And it's even questioned if this so-called ledger even existed. According to the Budapest archives, or Budapest, I think the Americans call it, victims would be covered in honey. Insects burned with hot tongs, coins, keys, branded and doused in freezing cold water, and then thrown into the cold. It was also said the Bathory used to stick needles into her victims, stabbing them. In some cases, they were beaten and starved to death. However, several historians argue that her cruel and barbaric tendencies were merely claims to discredit Bathory. Hungarian professor Laszlo Nagy believes that the accusations against Bathory were politically motivated due to her extensive fortune. Bathory supported her nephew Gabor, or Gabriel, Bathory, the Prince of Transylvania, who was a rival to King Matthias and his throne. She and her money, land and support was all seen as a threat. If you get rid of Elizabeth, you reduce the threat of Gabor. Elizabeth had already proved herself a powerful ally when she bailed out Hungary in the Long War. As a result of financially supporting Matthias in the Long War, King Matthias owed Elizabeth a lot of money, and she did frequent court as a reminder of the debts that he owed her. 
So Matthias had a motive of getting rid of Elizabeth and the debt that he owed her. It is even said that he wanted her to be tried and executed so he could take her lands and apparently it was only after Terzo convinced him of the scandal a trial and execution of the Countess would bring that he actually backed down, not wanting to be embarrassed and potentially destabilise his position. Bear with, bear with. Bartosiewicz, Bartosiewicz. Bartosiewicz. Back. Alexandra Bartosiewicz and Tony Thorne support this theory of exaggerating the accusations to try and discredit her and weaken her support of Gabor. Thorne acknowledges that her imprisonment was beneficial to her rivals and her family as once she was imprisoned, her valuables were taken from her property by her children. Kimberly L. Craft, the author of The Infamous Lady, suggests that her stress at running essentially an empire on her own was more likely to be the motivation for the Countess's torturous attacks. The final point I'm going to cover is the alleged drinking and bathing in blood and the excessive amount of blood around the castle. Elizabeth Bathory was said to have drunk the blood of young women, believing that it would preserve her beauty and youth. She is alleged to have been bathed in the blood of her young victims because she is said to have slapped a female servant in rage and discovered that her skin looked younger where the servant's blood had been splashed. Ilona Joe, one of Elizabeth's accomplices, said that the Countess did beat girls until they bled, so hard that the blood pooled onto the floor and splattered the Countess's clothing, and then she would go change. I mean, what is essentially Elizabethan clothing wasn't as easy to change as changing our top now, so why go to the effort of getting it dirty in the first place, just to change it? Servants who got out of the castle alive spoke of seeing blood-drenched walls and hearing terrifying screams. The servants were instructed to wash away any blood that was on the floor. Let's talk about the blood drinking and bathing just for a second. This is most certainly untrue. The first account of this being mentioned was in 1817. In addition, no one who testified against Bathory mentioned anything of the drinking and bathing. And Elizabeth showed no interest in preserving the blood as any part of beauty regime. But what about the ever-growing pile of bodies and the blood-splattered walls? Well, what if I told you the well-educated Countess was attempting to medically treat the poor serfs that she had interceded for and was trying to help? As mentioned at the beginning of this episode, Elizabeth had a passion for learning. There is nothing to confirm nor deny, contemporary or not, to say that she didn't extend her learning to medicine, medical treatment, and perhaps even surgery. She did request others for their books on science, did she not? It is possible, given her target demographic of young women between the ages of 10 to 14, that she was an abortionist. Having allegedly had an illegitimate child of her own and being a member of the nobility, Elizabeth perhaps understood more than others the need of someone who could get rid of an unwanted baby. This would also, potentially, explain why none of her victims were men. Abortion, even in the Victorian era, wasn't safe. So maybe by helping women, she was accidentally killing them? Or they didn't survive the procedure? Or ignoring the abortionist angle completely? What if young women were desperate for Elizabeth's help? Trying unconventional methods by today's standards? And again, not everybody would have survived the medical procedures. I know I'm trying to make the counter-argument that she wasn't a serial killer. And I do believe that there is a possibility. M maybe she was an intelligent woman who was trying to help women, but didn't necessarily go about it the right way. Maybe she was somebody that was victimised and vilified by her own family. But... For me personally, I like the serial killer angle of the Blood Countess. It makes a way better story for Halloween. But what do you think? 
If you want a full bio of the Blood Countess, I have a video on it, so go check it out. Make sure that you like this video, share it with a friend, and subscribe to this channel. Next month we will be embarking on Napoleon November, which, don't worry, I will continue to upload Tudor content, okay? But, until the next one, have a wonderful day.